Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, yesterday uh, we made a introduction to classes. We said that they are very similar to structures. The only difference is, uh, the only difference that we saw is uh, uh, they include functions other than the data members. And uh, the idea of putting data members uh, and the data and the related functions together in a single structure is called encapsulation. You, you, you put them in a capsule and it's called encapsulation. It is the basic, uh, one of the basic uh, ideas of object-oriented programming, okay? Object-oriented programming says that always try to organize your data, put related data together, also uh, write uh, the functions that will work on that data and put them all of them together and uh, call them functions and you should yeah, write your uh, programs whole programs only this way don't use any global uh, functions that's the idea of one of the ideas of object oriented programming if you do it this way uh, the code that you are building uh, will 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 be more reusable will be more uh, easy will be easier to design and will be easier to maintain that's the experience what the experience shows us okay of course you can do a very nice uh, uh, you can you can you can follow uh, the principles of structured programming uh, procedural programming other programming principles in c and you can come up with uh, nice programs but the experience shows us that if you follow the object oriented programming rules uh, uh, the results are better for most of the teams Following object-oriented programming principles doesn't guarantee that you will end up with a, a, a very usable, nice working um, a, a, a program because, I mean, these are software projects and uh, a good fraction of the software projects, unfortunately, fails. They don't work the way we want. They don't work uh, at the performance that we want. That's the rule of the game, actually. It's a risky business, especially if you are doing some uh, some some software that requires some research and uh, development, actually. Uh, but if you follow these rules, the, the results are better. That's what the experience shows. So, uh, basically, in this course, in this course, uh, throughout the semester, uh, as I said before, we will talk about two things. One thing is one thing is uh, the ideas of object-oriented programming. Okay. Let me, let me go to that slide again. Okay. Okay, the principles of object-oriented programming, we will talk about these a lot. And the other thing is that how do you achieve these? Okay, how do you achieve these using the C++ programming language and later at the semester, uh, Java programming language. So uh, I kind of told you what the encapsulation is, okay? And we talked about the data abstraction, and we talked about the information uh, hiding, and uh, uh, we will keep talking about these when we are building examples. And at the same time, I will tell you how how the um, how the C++ programming language achieves these principles or these goals. Okay, so uh, let's look at let's go back and let's look at our last example that I showed you, I guess it was maybe this one or maybe this one yeah, okay so um, we added a few more we added a few more um, uh, functions here we said that we said that if we write our programs this way, this would have been nicer, right? So do that and this way, and I, I write this equals function, a member function. This program is much more readable. It is much more readable now. When you look at it, I know that I am going to read this today, which is a day of a year from the keyboard birthday from the keyboard okay and uh, I am going to this, this is nice okay 
I am going to I am going to print today to the screen and I am going to print next day to the screen. Okay, these are all very readable and very easy to write, very easy to understand, uh, as you see. Uh, so we are achieving whatever we whatever we said uh, about the about the, about object oriented programming. One thing is this: what is the principle of information hiding? Always hide the information from the customer that the customer doesn't need to. Look at this. Uh, look at this syntax here. Are my are my students online? Are they fine? Let me check them. How many we have? Okay, we have enough numbers. Well, 42 is not enough, but okay. Uh, are you guys hearing me? Okay. Am I breaking up? My voice is okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I can hear you too. Um, so if I say today, that day, it will print the day data member of today object, right? Okay. It will print the day uh, data member of the today field. Actually, we don't like these kind of statements. Okay, day and actually day and month are two data members that is internal to me. I mean, I don't want anybody to interfere with these two data members. Okay, because I mean, what what, what you wanna do with my what do you wanna do with my uh, 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 with my day of year objects, maybe you are going to print something out. Let me, by the way, let me make this like that. All right? So let me make this input. Okay. So that we know how they are implemented. I have input, I have output equals less than next day. These are all nice. Maybe we could say today that, right? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Input, because we don't know how to overload that stuff. And this is birthday dot input. And today dot output, right? So let me, okay. How about this one? Today that next day that output. As you see, since I am not passing any parameters, it is easy to write this kind of code. So I am kind of calling a function next day and I am calling another function. U using this uh, member function calling notation, it is very easy to um, write this kind of stuff now. Okay, so did I did I miss anything? Okay, maybe this birthday that input. Good. Okay. So all the things that I need about this uh, day of year class can be handled using these one, two, three, four, five functions. That's it. I don't need to go in and change one of these day and month. But this one, this one is trying to do that. It is trying to access that day data member and it's trying to print out on the screen. Or maybe just the just the opposite, just the opposite. I might say I might say today um, uh, today that month Guess the value of two. Okay, so these two are valid. I can do that, but I don't want to do that because this is against the rule of information hiding. Because the, in the outside world, my customers they don't they don't need about they don't need the details of about they don't need the details of details of how I store that information. Let's say I decided that using these two integers is too expensive in terms of memory usage. Next day, I like to change them to characters, okay? If I do that, 
I can do that. This is my software. This, this is what I want. I mean, whatever I can do, whatever I want. But if I do that, since my customers are playing with my internal data this day and month, they are dependent on it. They have to change their code too because now they are characters. Okay. You might say that, okay, when you change it, when you change these two from integers to characters, then you have to change your output <coughs> function, right? Output function will not work uh, as it is. You have to make the changes, but yeah, that's true. That's my function. I am going to change it. But the outside world will not know that I changed this implementation, this output, because this line 53 will stay exactly the same. Okay. This is what I promised to the outside world. Output will work like this. Input will work like this. But I don't want to promise that the my month and day will be characters or they are integers, maybe enumerations. I don't know. Okay. So I can change it. So to prevent this from happening, I like to keep these secret from the outside world and I hide them at the end of my class definition at the end of my class definition and I tell them that these are private okay these are private to my class nobody can have access to these two data members from the outside world okay from the outside world what does that mean outside world if I am a customer of this class, I can make objects of this class like today and birthday. I can use input, input, output, next day, equals, etc. No problem. But line 30, 37 and 38 becomes illegal. I cannot use it anymore. Okay? These are now, these are now, these two, okay? These two are now illegal and I'm going to comment them out. Control, control that. Let me try that one. These two, control that. Yeah, it works. Okay. These are illegal. I cannot use them anymore because if I use them, the compiler will give me an error message saying that, uh, saying that these two are private data members. Let me try to compile this. Is it compilable? I think I implemented. Uh, I, there are a few things that are not implemented. This will compile, will not leak, but in this case, it will not compile. A project feature, okay, compile. Compile, yeah. So I compiled it. What does that say? Yeah, I have a, it says character day of your day is private. Where does it say that? Okay. But it is, okay, line 18, line 37, yeah, this one. Line 37, this one is private, and maybe this is too small for you to see it. Yeah, I mean, online people will see it, but you won't, but it says this is private here. How can I show you this one? I can, can I make it bigger? No. I am making, okay, maybe I can do this. Just take a screenshot and crop this crop it where is the crop okay here is the crop crop it this way this way okay now make it bigger And I don't know how to now. <laughs> Where did it go? Are there any? What happened? Can I move this around? Well, you have to believe me. It says that <laughs> this this thing is private. Okay, character day of your day is private. You don't have right to access it. So you have to change something. You don't, you don't, you don't, as a customer, you don't have the privilege of going into my, going into my data members and modifying them. Okay. Uh, that's the meaning of public and private. Public means that anybody uh, who can be a customer of this class, day of year, can call one of these functions. Okay. 
Private means that these two data members are private. They can be used freely inside your class, inside in any of these implementations of these functions. It is free to use them. Okay, it is okay to use them. But if you are a customer of this class, then you don't have an access to, to these month and day. Okay, so these are called access modifiers. Okay, public access modifier and private access modifier. There is one more access modifier, and we are going to see it. I guess it's in a, in a few weeks. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, let me go back to the slides again. Okay, public and private members. Data in classes almost always designated private. Okay, that doesn't say that data in classes always designated. Okay, almost always, because there are some cases where you, you want to expose your internal data, so you make them public in that case. But most of the time, most of the time, your data will be, your data will be uh, uh, private. Okay, so it, ha it upholds the principles of object-oriented programming, and we hide data from the user. The user doesn't have to see the data, and they shouldn't see the data because what can they do with the data? I mean, if they have access to the data, if they have access to the data, um, yeah, here it is. If they have access to the data, you could do things stupid like this. Okay. They are assigning something, they are assigning something to mom that is not valid, minus four. Okay, you might say that, well, you can do the same thing with input, right? Birthday.input. But birthday.input is my function, and if I like, I can do that range, check, range checking, right? And if the user gives me, what, what does the input do? It reads something from the keyboard, right? If the user gives me minus 5 or plus uh, 55 for the month, I would, I would just terminate my program or set it to 0, 1 or 12 or whatever, okay? Since I am controlling this input and output myself, I can do those kind of range checking myself. But how about this one, 38? There is nothing I can do as the class designer and implementer about this line 38. If month is uh, public or day is public, it is, it is uh, available for everybody to play with. And if they do this kind of stupid stuff, okay, my objects will be invalid, and I don't want that. In C, thinking of, uh, in C philosophy, C says that, okay, you are the boss, do whatever you want. In C++, or in object-oriented programming languages, we don't say that. We say that if I am writing a class, all of the class objects should always be valid, okay? There shouldn't be any valid, there should not be any valid, invalid objects uh, living around. That would be bad, okay? So keep your objects always in valid states, nicely initialized and nicely initialized and uh, always have valid values and etc. Okay. So I don't want this kind of thing to happen. That's why I say that uh, one of the reasons I I I, I keep saying this, um, I make them private is uh, hide that information from the outside world because there is nothing good can come out come out from that one. Okay, right. Usually we write stuff like that. I mean, if if you really want to access those values directly, I can write getters. For example, I would say integer uh, get day. Okay, and integer get month. Okay, these are called getters. I would call them, they, they will simply return the day value and the month value. These are public functions. And similarly, similarly, I would do the same thing with, okay, setters. This is going to be set day, set month. Of course, these two will be both void. Okay, and of course they need a parameter, integer parameter and integer parameter. So these are for setting, these are for getting, okay? 
And again, since I wrote this set and set, set day and set month myself, I can do that range checking. That cannot be smaller than smaller than zero and larger than. And in fact, no. Let me do this in a better way. Set day and set month is not a good idea, actually. Why not? Because because what if somebody sets the day to 30 and set the month to two? That's an invalid thing, right? Let's let's write it. Let's say set date integer and integer, right? Get rid of this one. That way, I can I can make I can make the check for all the months and dates, right? I mean, for the January, I will make sure that it is at most 31. Smallest is one. For the February, it's going to be smallest is one and uh, at, at large. Maybe, maybe I will allow 29. Sometimes it can happen, right? Okay. So uh, it is smarter to write set date this way. If there are invalid values, then the set date will handle it accordingly, whatever the mechanism is. Okay. So that's the that's the that's the idea. That's the uh, idea. Remember the vector class? We don't know what's going on inside the vector. We know how to use it. Okay. And whenever you declare a vector, it is size is zero. There is nothing in it. Okay. There is nothing. If you ask the size, it is zero. How, if you compare it with the array, if you declare an array without initialization, without initializing uh, 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 anything in it, just a pointer like pointer, it is, it is, you would say empty, but there is no space allocated to it and etc. I have to be very careful about that one. With the vectors, you, you don't have to that much careful about the vector sizes because I can, I can increment their sizes, decrement it. I can do different kinds of, uh, different kinds of uh, things and most of the time I am safe. Of course, you might say that, of course, you might say that, how about this, if you have, a, if I have a vector, vector of integers v that should be zero integers in it when i say v7 gets the value of eight this will compile and this will run and probably you will get a segmentation fault out of, out of this code and you might say that what happened to our always valid logic and uh, logic and object-oriented programming here. I mean, this is not this is not working. This is making this is making me look bad, right? But it is the fault of this index operator, not the uh, not object-oriented programming. So maybe you should not write these kind of index operators. There is another one. There is another one. V dot add. Okay, add function will return. The element at the index number is seven, and you can print it out, no problem. So the set function will behave nicely. It will check the range. If you provide a bad index number, it will not run, okay? It will let you know that you did something bad. It will not crash, okay? So why don't we use this at all the time? Because, because why, why do you think that we are not using at all the time index of the in, in, instead of the index operator? Index operator sometimes causes segmentation faults. Add doesn't, fault, doesn't cause any in, in, uh, segmentation faults at all. It always runs nicely. If 7 is valid, it gives you the result. If it is not, then it will let you know that there is a problem. So why don't we use add all the time? Some, some, someone might say this. I like to assign a number to it. What am I going to do? You will say v dot add to guess the value of seven yeah this is possible because it returns a reference so why do you think that i keep using index operator in the, in the instead of at at function i forgot to bring the attendance att 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 sheet sorry i will bring it after the break has to make additional operations for checking if it uh, exactly yeah exactly because add is more expensive than index operator what is the cost of index operator 
one addition and one multiplication and the excess, right? Add is doing the same thing, okay? Add is doing the same thing, but before doing that addition and multiplication, add makes sure that uh, the, the, the position that you are accessing is a valid one, so it has to use a if statement, right? It cannot be less than zero. It should not be larger than this maximum size of the vector. So th this is not free, right? You have to use CPU for that. So it is expensive. And if you think of those loops, sorting loops, nested loops, and they keep using this index operator like crazy, every time you make a check, uh, it's going to cost you a lot. So your sorting algorithm will be maybe two times slower, okay? Which is a, which is a bad thing. So. I mean, this kind of a balance between object-oriented programming uh, principles and uh, efficiency. And usually, usually, if you follow these rules, okay, if you follow these rules in C++, you will end up a you will end up with a nice program, object-oriented program, easy to maintain, easy to understand, easy to design, etc. But your program will be a little bit slow, slower than the C corresponding C program, maybe 80, uh, okay. If C program is running in 100 seconds, your C++ program will run in 150 or 180 seconds, okay? So 80 more seconds, 80% slower than the corresponding C part. Java program will run three, three times slower. Java is much slower than both C and C++, okay? So how do you find the balance? I mean, if you are after, if you are after speed and optimization and every every clock cycle of your CPU is important, every byte of your memory is important, then write your program in assembly, okay, if it is that important. Or you, you can manage some, you can, you, you can manage some uh, using extra uh, CPU cycles, then C is good. Uh, and if you don't care much about your speed and uh, uh, memory, uh, okay, I, should, I shouldn't say that if you don't care, we should always be careful about the memory usage or the CPU usage, uh, but it is not that important. I mean, running it in one second or what, what is the difference running a program in 10 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds? Most of the time it is not important for many people. So write your programs in Java. It will be easy to write, easy to understand. There are lots of libraries and etc. C++ kind of tries to find the middle way, both fast and object oriented. Okay, that's why if you think that if you think that instead of instead of instead of accessing okay a month like this, you are calling a function set uh, uh, set uh, what did I call that set date? Yeah, set date because set date has to run right. It's a function. I mean, what is the alternative for set date accessing these? data members uh, directly. Uh, by calling the set date, it will be a little bit slower, but it will be the object-oriented way. So always, always, for now as a rule of thumb, okay, at the beginning, make your data private and provide set and get data members. Okay, set and get, sorry, uh, uh, function members, if they are appropriate. Okay, if they are appropriate. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make any sense to provide a set to some private data, which is very critical. I mean, you shouldn't pro provide a set for, for some of your data. For example, you don't have a set data, set function for your internal array in vectors, okay? They don't want you to change the internal structure of your stuff, so you keep them hidden. Nobody would know what they are doing. But in this case, I provided these uh, set, set and get stuff. Okay, yes? Uh, we put month and day in private uh, because we don't want them, to, want them to be changed. But we have set date function which can uh, change them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I write this class to be useful, right? If somebody wants to change the date, yeah, they can change it. But I am going to write set date in a way that it is impossible to set the date to an invalid value, like minus four or 55, okay? okay? And if I think that, maybe the customers should not 
maybe the customers should not set the date at all. Okay, then I'm going to do this. I am not going to provide any any okay mutator functions. These are called mutator functions. They mutate my objects. Okay, they change my objects. If I don't provide them, my customers will not be won't be able to change anything in my class. Okay, so it is up to me. It is my decision. It's my decision. Okay. Good. So uh, the, the question is nice. The question says that I mean, what is the difference between calling a set date and the changing it directly? Okay. I can do this if it is public, or I can do today that set date. Okay, minus four comma fifty seven. Okay. Line 42 will definitely make my month minus 4, definitely. But line 43, I am writing it. Probably I will, if I get such uh, invalid dates, probably I will set my date to January 1st. Or I will, uh, I will, I will terminate my program. Or maybe, I mean, maybe the uh, set date will return an integer value to show that there is an error, etc. Okay, so that's a good question. And we will talk about that. It doesn't make doesn't make much sense for a C programmer, but this is the world of uh, object-oriented programming, and it takes a little bit time to understand what's going on. Once you understand it, it becomes so natural, and you will say that okay, why don't we apply these kind of rules in our C programs too? Okay, so public and private are these. Okay, so two things is important. What is public? What is private? Okay, how we are using it. Okay, what they are doing, okay, that, that's easy to understand, actually, that's not difficult. I mean, it is not difficult to see that now this one causes a uh, compiler error because this one is private, okay? So this is the mechanism, but the second thing is, it is the more important one, why are we doing this? I mean, why are we hiding our data from the outside world, okay? That's the important part. So it is important to, it is important to know how we do it and why we do it. So I am trying to teach you both of them at the same time. Okay. So if you know one of them, then not the other, it will not be good. So you should know both of them equally well. Go back to the slides. Okay. Public private example here. I have the, my day of year class. Okay. I have just two simple functions. One is input, one is output. Month and day is uh, private, declared private. My data now is private, and my customers, my customers, won't have direct access to month and day. If you like to change them, they need to call the input. If you like to see their contents, they need to print them out to the screen. This is a very simple class again, uh, uh, just to show the examples. Okay, let's say I have day of year today. Today is a day of year object, okay? And um, when I do this, when I do this, after this class definition, C in today.month or C out today.day, they won't be allowed, this, these will cause, these will cause compiler errors. And the correct thing is here is calling these two nice functions. These two nice functions, will make the validity check, plus they have these nice formatting uh, uh, mechanisms, so they will, they, will, they will print them out on the screen in a nice formatted way. Okay, so uh, public and private, usually we, we write our private data, private, by the way, by the way, okay. Um, in your private section, you may have your functions and data. In your public section, okay, you may have your, you may have your um, uh, data and uh, functions. Private section is for only data is a wrong thing. No, it is not. Okay, private data, private section is not just for the data. Uh, in your private section, which is here, from this point to the end of this line, okay. 
private section, you can put uh, uh, anything, including functions and the data. For the public section, it is the same thing. It is the same thing. And I can, I can usually, I provide my private section at the end of my class definition, because the customer doesn't have to see this part. I kind of try to hide it away from the customer. Customer will only see, okay, customer will see, okay, this class definition. Customer has to see the class definition because this is how to use the class. This is the public part, this is the interface. Customer usually reads this part, okay? When it comes to the private part, customer doesn't read it anymore because there is nothing they can do about this private section. Okay? So uh, you can mix and match public and private. What does that mean? Private doesn't have to be at the end. It could be at the top. Or you could say, I have a public section, class, let's say, my class name is A. There is a public section. I have some functions. There is a private section. I have some functions and data. And then there could be a public section again. I have some uh, data and functions, etc. So this could be a valid. This could be a valid uh, uh, class definition. So when they mean mix and match public and private, this is, this is what they mean. Okay. Typically, we place public first because that's the important thing for the customer. Okay. It's like customer is reading my function headers, right? And usually we keep our class definitions like this in our header files, okay? Class definitions, declarations, will be in our header file. My function implementations will be in our CPP file. And as you know, the CPP files are not exposed to the customer, okay? So more typically place public first. It allows easy weaving of portions that can be used by the programmers. And um, and that private section is not, okay, the customer is not supposed to, is not supposed to read that part. Some other object-oriented programming languages, they, 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 they put the private data first or the private section first at the top. But they are, they are different programming languages. Their philosophies are different. In C, C++, we have header files. In Java, they don't, okay? They don't have header files. They have some other ways of showing their functions to the customer. Okay, good. Any questions so far? Any questions from the online, online students? Any questions? I guess no questions. And these are the functions that I am talking about, accessor and mutator functions. Okay. The accessor functions, they just access the data. They don't modify them. Uh, output is such, an, such a function. Okay. Output is such a function. It doesn't modify any data members. It doesn't modify any data members. It just accesses them and prints them out. Mutator is different. Mutator is, mutator is, um, mutator is a function that modifies the object data, object itself. Okay. So we like to keep them uh, separate. All the getters, getter functions are accessors. All the setter functions are mutators. Okay. Let's go back to our nice program here. Let's see what, which ones are mutators and which ones are accessor. Input is mutator or accessor? It's a mutator, right? Because it's input. How about output? Is this <coughs> mutator or accessor? It's an accessor. Equals. Is is it is it accessor or Mutator. Let's remember what equals does. Okay. Go to the definition of equals. Where is it? Okay, here it is equals. Okay. Here. Equals. Okay. Equals. 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 Equals.
And in this case, equals doesn't modify anything. It just makes it might just makes this equality check between month and day data members, and that's it. So equals is a accessor, right? How about next day? Is this is this accessor or mutator? Just take your time, read the code. And I am going to get a count out of this one, and also from the online people too. I am going to take a vote, just to wake you up, maybe. Okay, people, who thinks that who thinks that next day is a mutator? Raise your hands. Online people and yourself too. Is this a mutator? So nobody thinks that it's a mutator. No, it is either mutator or accessor. Just cast your vote. How many things that is a mutator? One, two, three, four, five, six people in the classroom, and only two people in the only two, three people in the uh, uh, online people, five people, four people. Some people keep changing their minds. So most of the people either asleep or they think that it's an it's a, it's an accessor. Actually, it is kind of difficult to make that decision because next day doesn't modify this object at all. I mean, my day and month they don't change, but it is changing the day and month of this uh, new object, next object. <coughs> So it is actually not modifying my object. Okay, when I say today that next day, I know that after this call today will not be changed, right? So today that next day will not change today. So it's an accessory, it's not a mutator. It doesn't change anything in my object. It changes some other objects. Okay, that's fine, but it doesn't change my my object. By the way, now the correct way of writing this one is okay instead of saying next day uh, assignment such and such i am going to use this this is better next day set date and this is the month part and get rid of this part this is the day part and yeah, do it this way. Good. Okay. So I am using the set date function. Oh no 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 no. Sorry. Next dot. Yeah. Also month minus one. Uh, should it be? Where? The. Uh, you mean this one? Yeah. Month. Well, I I I am not sure the, about the logic of this one, but I think it should be month, because. I am incrementing the day and I am looking at the maximum of this month. If this it is month, January, it is zero. Oh, 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 you mean the plus one. Maybe I should put a like, okay. So I am going to keep starting from center. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, see, I, I called this set date function so that I am using my public interface to do something useful. So maybe the set date is doing something about the checks. Maybe it will figure out something that I am using it wrong and etc. Okay, so it is okay to use call these functions set date uh, uh, or get date or for example this one. Instead of saying month, I say get month. Okay. And instead of saying other that month, I should say get month, maybe. Okay. Even in my code, where can I can access uh, where can I where I can access the uh, data members directly, okay? I am using this setters and getters. That's that's the logic of object-oriented programming. Actually, this is a 
better call than than what it used to be. Okay. I I I have access to the private data in here, but I am not using the private data directly. I am using the public interface again. Uh, so you, you might say that okay, I hid my information from outside world, but now I am hiding in infor hiding information from myself too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Why? Because if I later, as I said before, if I later, if I change the types of those mountain day data members, okay, the outside world will not get affected, I know, but my inside code, my internal code will not get affected that much if I use this interface. Uh, you might say that this is a little bit more inefficient because instead of accessing the data directly, I am calling a function here. Calling a function is expensive sometimes. Yeah, that's true, but uh, as I said before, we try to make it right in object-oriented programming. Write your code properly good, nicely. Then if there is a problem with efficiency issues, then we can deal with that later, okay? And we have good engineers, good enough engineers, smart enough engineers to solve this problem. And in fact, this is calling this get mount, uh, uh, getter or setter, does not cause any performance problems actually. Compiler optimizes them, and we are going to see how. Okay, so as, as, as always, I use too much time again. Let me take 10, 15 minutes of break. After 15 minutes, we will continue from this point on. 9.35, we will start. Okay, let's let's keep the classroom empty during the breaks and don't don't forget to open the windows. Keep the windows open.
Çantamdayım şimdi. Pardon. Sen nasıl veriyorsun? Pardon. Okay, so... Um... 
we're talking about is accessor and mutator functions. Mutator member functions allow objects to change data, okay? Uh, okay, manipulated based on the application. Uh, uh, which ones do we prefer in object-oriented programming languages? Usually, this is the idea. You try to you try to restrict your user as as much as possible. Principle of least privilege. Okay, try to give your user, try to give your customer as little privilege as possible. Don't 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 give too much power to your customer. That doesn't mean that you don't like your customer. That means that only give enough power. So if a function can be a, a mutator function or accessor function, make it an accessor. Don't try to make it a mutator because. Being a mutator is more powerful. It can do more stuff on your data, but sometimes it may hurt you. So, okay, try to write more accessor functions than the mutator functions, and we will we will we will see examples of this a lot. There is this principle of maybe you know this principle of least privilege, okay. We use this a lot. Uh, for example, that const keyword is an example of it. We restrict our code ourselves by using this const keyword. We promise ourselves that I am not going to change this data, right? Question for you, let's say I have a program that is 10,000 lines long. It's a very nice program, compiled, run, and my customers are uh, uh, very happy about it. And it is written using object-oriented programming rules and nice C programming rules and etc. And it includes at least 200 const keywords in it, which is nice. If this program compiles and runs, and then after that I am doing this. After this program compiles and runs, I go back to my program and I remove all the const keywords. I remove all the const keywords, okay? Would my program compile and run? I removed all the cost keywords from this program. It was a perfectly running program. It was a perfectly compiling and running program. And I, after I am done with program, everything working nicely, I removed all the cost keywords. Does this program compile? Oh, may I respond? Sure. Uh, probably it will, uh, since given that uh, if, if you use uh, constant keyword for, for the functions, you are not attempting to uh, change the value. So uh, it's going to work just fine, I think. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because when I, when I say i is a const, somewhere const integer i, OK? That means that I did not change the value of i at all, right? And if I remove this one, nothing will change in my program. So the question is, the question is, if I remove all those constant keywords, why should I use a const keyword? And I mean, this 10,000 lines of code is doing exactly the same thing as before, right? It is running as efficient as before. It is doing exactly the same as before. Why do I, why am I using this const keyword then, right? Can anybody answer? Okay. Yes? I think it may be useful for debugging. Maybe we forget that. I did the debugging, everything. Go on, you continue, you just, you don't, when, I, when I respond, you just, don't keep your silence, you just come back. Okay. I mean, uh, maybe we may forget that uh, that was a constant and we may try to change. Yeah. If we don't use uh, const uh, word, keyword, keyword uh, conclusion doesn't wanna. Yeah. Well, maybe the writing that using this const keyword is important by developing the code, right? Because it will catch us some errors if we change some value by mistake. It will catch us. It will help us. Uh, Catching those 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 errors, those those errors, uh, it will be helpful in debugging. Right, thank you. Okay, so 
these kind of things are important. So I use the principle of least privilege here. What did I do? I restrict I restricted this I, okay, integer I from modification. Nobody can modify it. This uh, restriction, least privilege. If you are going to use I, you can use I for reading only, and you cannot do anything else. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So this principle of least privilege applies to object-oriented programming uh, philosophy again. Try to hide your data, try to hide functionality from the user, from the customer as, as, as much as possible. It's like, again, the car example. I am, I am driving a car. There are only a few things that I can do with a car. Car is a very complicated thing. There is a, there is a pedal, when I press that pedal, car accelerates. There is another pedal when I press it, car slows down, and there is a uh, there is the there is the steering wheel. When I turn it, it goes left and right, and that's it. Okay, just three parameters for to use a car. Okay, that's three things I can adjust ma make these adjustments in three ways. Okay, but car has internally has thousands of parameters, like the ignition parameters like the suspension parameters like the uh, uh, like the parameters for the for the electrical uh, system or the cooling system etc right but i don't care about them because somebody has adjusted them and as long as i am doing uh, my driver job okay accelerating and uh, uh, braking and steering fine i should be fine so they restricted myself they give me only a, a least privilege while driving the car, only a few buttons, few parameters. Rest of them is handled by the engineers of the car, okay? I might be a mechanical engineer to design a car, but while I am using the car, I am just dealing with three things. Gas pedal, brake pedal, and the steering wheel, that's it. So principle of least privilege is something like that, okay? Keep, keep, the power away, unnecessary power away from the, from the, from the, from the user, from the customer. Okay, so that's why we like to separate this accessor and mutator functions. We like the accessors better than the mutators, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't use mutators at all. If you don't use the mutators at all, okay, if you don't use the mutators at all, we cannot do anything, 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 anything useful. Come back to this one and a uh, car example. I have a car, when I sit in the car, there is nothing to touch, there is no pedals, there is no steering wheel. Is this a useful car? No. I mean, this is, this is how we apply, is this, is this the way we apply the principle of least privilege? No, of course not. Because we like to make useful stuff. I mean, that kind of a car is not a useful car. I cannot do anything about it. But, but a car with just brake pedal, gas pedal, and the steering wheel is a very useful tool. Okay, so we are after making this kind of useful tool without exposing our internal data or internal functions in object-oriented programming languages. And, and following the same logic, uh, we have this definition of interface, okay? Classes have interfaces. What's an interface? Arayuz in Turkish. Interfaces are the public sections of your classes, okay? In this case, my interface is only this much. Okay, this is my, I'm trying to, okay. This part is my interface to the customer. The customer needs to know only this part. Okay, the rest of them is not part of the interface. My customer should not read rest of this class, uh, class declaration. Okay, and we like to keep our interface from the, uh, uh, we like to keep our interface from the, separate from the implementation. Implementation is different from the interface, okay? And uh, uh, again, what did we say? We said that encapsulation is one of the basic principles of object-oriented programming, okay? Putting the data and the functions working on the data in the same capsule encapsulate them, okay? But while we are doing this, we don't, we don't put them at the same place, okay? We hide some of them. That's the information hiding rule, okay? Information hiding rule. 
we encapsulate our data and uh, the functions together, but we hide away the details of the internal workings of the class from the customer. Only the interface part is exposed to the customer, okay? So we separate the interface from the implementation, and we are doing this after the encapsulation, of course. And our programs, our uh, software systems, become very reusable software systems, actually. And it is, it is very easy to use, very easy to understand, very easy to use it in other places, like the vector class, okay? Like the vector class or the spring, string, string, String class, you know, you know how string is useful. I mean, you just declare it and you just uh, uh, use the comparison operators, uh, assignment operators. Uh, okay, you can you can merge two strings, catenation and etc. Using all of the operators. So the exposed part of the string is very nice. I can I can use them uh, without understanding, without uh, having to know the the details of the uh, internal workings of the string class. So. The important thing is to know the interface of the class itself. Okay, the, and we like to keep the implementation of the class hidden. Like this one, uh, like we did bef before, let's say I have this day of year class. I, I will have a day of year header. Inside this header, I have my class definition, class day of year. Okay, and I will have here, and I will have, and I will have day of year CPP. Inside this day of year CPP, of course, I am going to include day of year header, right? And then I will do my implementations, function implementations. Anybody who likes to use this day of year class as a customer, they will have to include this day of year header, like we are including the string header. Okay, like we are including the string header. You like to see the string header? We don't usually look at the headers in C++ because they are nicely written documentation, but um, C++ string header. It will be a little bit difficult to understand it to be because I didn't teach you everything to understand the whole header stuff. Okay, so this is the string header. How many lines of? Okay, thousand more than thousand lines. A little bit more stuff. Okay, see they are they are defining a namespace here, and there are some classes. There is a class. It's called basic string. So the string class uses some other classes. One of them is basic string and this is my public. There are many type types inside the public and let me try to find the private section of this class. Did you see it? No, let me use the control F stuff. Private, I don't have private. No, everything is public. Well, I mean, as I said, I didn't tell you the whole story yet because, as I said, string uses many other uh, many other classes in it, and it looks like everything is in public in here. Okay, so it is a little bit difficult to understand. It is not like documented very well, and this is the basic string stuff. Let me is that is that is this the basic string? What is the name? No, no, it is. Oh, this is debug string. It is not the real string itself. Can I find the... Did you see string class here? str. Yeah, this is, yeah, okay, let's look at this one. String. <laughs> 
Okay. So this is not the head of itself. Let's let's try to find the string head of itself. This is again basic string. Yeah. Yeah, this is not debug string, but this is basic string. Okay. So see these compiler directives? If the C version is greater than C eleven or C seventeen, see these? And these are the longs. It is doing something else. So the, the definition of string changes from class to class. Okay, my okay, basic string, public section here. Do I have yeah, this is the private. Okay. Inside the private section, there are many other uh, definitions. So the my interface is actually this much here. We don't understand what they are. We are going to see later what they what they what they mean. There are many definitions and etc. So that's the interface part, and we include that string that h. I didn't show you string that cpp. It is available because this is GCC, right? Everything is available, but it is much larger than the header itself. Usually, as I said before, usually we don't look at the header files for the string class or the vector class. We look at the documentation of it from uh, reference sites, okay? So uh, we keep the class implementation hidden. We talk about this, structures and classes are very similar, okay? For the structures, for the structures, everything is by default public. Okay, so you don't have to say in your structures these parts are public, these are parts are private, and etc. By default, everything is public. Okay, in structures, that's why we have never used the public keyword in a structure. Okay, everything is public. In classes, by default, all the all the all the all the all the members of a class is private. If you don't use the if you don't use the public keyword at the top, everything becomes private. Okay, that's the default. Okay, that's the that's the that's the default way of doing this. Let me let me go there. Let me. Okay. Is this my first definition? Yeah. Okay. If I don't use this keyword here, okay, and don't use this one. Okay, everything in this class definition day of your class definition becomes private. Okay, that's why in my first example there was a public keyword at the top. Without that, it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't work at all. So making a class, making a class, okay, that has all the data and function members as public it is like making a car, okay, with no gas pedal or brake pedal or steering wheel, okay. Or with no doors, it is similar to that. So that that car or that class cannot be uh, useful uh, for 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 many cases. So we should be careful about this. Always make this public and private uh, access modifiers available at the appropriate places. Okay. So classes, uh, everything 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 uh, is private by default. So we use. Uh, those three keywords, public and private. Typically, again, typically, this is not all the time. Typically, typically, okay, all the data members are made private, but not all the time. Sometimes, some data members are made public for some for some classes. And uh, interface member functions are public. And sometimes you may have functions that are not public, that are private, okay? But technically they are the same thing. They, they are using the same mechanism. So you are saying that, I mean, you may summarize the whole C++ language as C++ is exactly the same as C. The only difference is in your structs, you have public and private sections then. I mean, if you like to be very uh, cruel about it, okay, if you if you like to define C++ that way, yeah, mechanism-wise, yes, it is true. I mean, C++ is the same as C, 
the, the difference is the, in, in your structures, uh, there are public and private sections, and that's it, okay? Uh, in a way, what you are saying is correct, but we are not using C++ just to write structures with public and private sections, okay? We are using, we are using C++ to write object-oriented programs, okay? Object-oriented programming examples. And to do that, we have to follow at least these principles encapsulate, hide information, abstract your data, etc. Okay, and there are a few more uh, principles such as the principles of least privilege. Okay, C++ makes it easy for us to follow these principles, to obey these principles. It doesn't guarantee that if you use the language itself, you follow these principles. Okay, it is you, it is up to you to follow these principles. Okay. Just because you are using the class keyword instead of struct in your C programs, okay, uh, will make you a good object-oriented programmer. No, that would be an error, okay? So, so you, you follow these principles, object-oriented programming principles, okay? And you get help from the, the programming language itself, the C++ or Java. And as I said before, if you follow these principles in C or in assembly, again that means that you are you are you are writing object-oriented programs. Okay, you don't have to use an object-oriented programming language to write object-oriented uh, object-oriented programs. Good. Any questions? Okay. Maybe today I did not say anything new about the mechanisms of C++. The only thing new that I told you is public and private. I think that's a five minute thing, but I have been talking for the two hours, last two hours. So today I spend most of my time to tell you about the main idea of object-oriented programming, right? Not the C++, but object-oriented programming. When we come to Java, all I'm going to say is that the same class structure exists in Java, same public private keywords are there, and I will just skip it. So this discussion in Java will take me just two minutes because you already, by the time, I hope, you already need to know about these kind of principles of object-oriented programming. Okay, let's talk about this thinking objects, okay? Uh, before in C, Algorithms were the center stage. We write functions. Inside the functions, we have algorithms. And data comes to your functions. You run your algorithms, and you return something from your function. And that was the idea of C, right? Now, it is data uh, uh, which is under focus in object-oriented programming, OK? You think about the data. What is my data? Related data. This related data, this, this, this data is related. OK, month and day are related, I put them together. How about the function, these are the functions. Now I put them together and encapsulate them, and encapsulate them, and this, this becomes a capsule, this becomes a class, and objects of this class will be very useful. That doesn't mean that we don't think about the algorithms at all. Of course we think about it. Remember the next day algorithm? It was complicated when I didn't implement everything there. Of course while you are writing functions, there are algorithms, but you don't start, you don't start you don't start, you don't start uh, working your program by thinking about the algorithms, okay? You think about your data first, and after you make your uh, design, uh, you then talk about your algorithms. Algorithms will come later. Of course, they will exist, okay? Uh, we design algorithms, but we design our algorithms after, after we design our classes, okay? And when you develop a software, piece of software, probably you are going to uh, design a number of classes, and these classes will interact with each other. They will interact with each other. And your program in C++ will be a collection of classes. Not it will be a collection of functions, like you see. It will be a collection of classes, and you will keep making objects of those classes, and each class object can, uh, of course, can use the other classes objects. Okay, so that's your uh, software software solution. Okay, good. Any questions? 
about the objects and classes. Remember, uh, if you are confused about the classes and objects, okay, this is your integer and this is your variable type and variable. This is my class and this is my object. Okay. Type variable, type variable, class, object, class, object. For the fundamental types like integer, double, boolean, etc. Okay, we don't call them classes and uh, uh, objects. We call them types and variables. Type, variable, class, object. But this is just the terminology, right? It doesn't matter what you call them. But usually when we talk about uh, this kind of stuff, uh, we use these terminology, types and variables, classes and objects. There is only one class, but you may have as many objects that you like as long as they fit in your memory, okay? One class, many objects. Classes don't hold memory in your, classes they don't, ha they don't, they don't, they don't occupy any memory, okay? But objects, the objects do. Types, they don't occupy any memory, but variables do. Good. There are no questions then. Did I show you the last example of this? Yeah, maybe I did not. Yeah, okay. So this is the last example from the uh, chapter number six, day of year class, input and output, and there is a set function here. I uh, set another function, get and get. So, uh, mutator, accessor. Mutator, mutator, accessor, and accessor. And in my private section, I have, I have these. Do you know how I get rid of? Okay, if I do this, okay, good. Okay, and uh, now I am writing this code instead of using the stream insertion extraction input and output and there is a set function here okay and the output and it is using these get numbers get get uh, 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 functions to get those values and make the comparison and do these stuff and they of your set is see it is doing the it is doing the range check Month should be between 1 and 12. Day should be 1 and 31st. Okay. And set is doing the same thing again here. It's kind of code repetition, right? See this one? Day of year set month new day. And I have set new month. Oh, I don't have set day, right? I don't have the set day, right? That's true. Just tell me a way to make this a little bit more uh, less code. Let's try to write one of these functions so that I don't have to repeat this code at all. We get this uh, set function. What does the set function do? It says the new month, but also it says the day to one, right? So instead of writing this whole thing, why don't I, okay, you tell me. I am going to use the new trick that I learned today. Yeah, good, yeah, okay. By the way, I don't know what I am using here. I think it is called DC++, I don't know. I mean, don't think that I prefer this one. I just click on CPP and this came up. So what should I do now? With this just single line of code, I will handle everything. Use the set function. So okay. tell me what should I type? What key I am hitting now? Set. Set, then what? New month. New month, yeah. Comma one. New month, comma one, exactly. Okay, that's it. So I'm using my other set overload. You see this? This function set is overloaded. One takes two parameters, the other one takes just a single parameter, it's overloaded. Number of parameters are different. Okay. So I am calling the other set. Okay. That's it. Okay. The other set is nice. It checks the validity of it. 
four balls from one pen a day. And that, that's nice, that's good. Okay? Maybe, oh, oh okay, oh, okay. So that is my input. Yeah, input is doing something bad too, see? Input says that get me this month uh, and day, and it checks if they are okay or not. No, I don't like it. Let's make it better. Okay, what should I do? Make it a little bit larger so that you can see it. I am going to do this two month and day. I will get month from the user and day from the user and then and then do this. Yeah, set month comma day. This is much better. Why? Because I don't have to keep repeating this check stuff. Output is no problem. So I think this became a little bit better. Okay, good. What did I say? We like to keep our objects always in valid, uh, always in valid uh, state. Okay. Uh, when you do the set 3321, this is a valid date. But if it is not, then what my what does my code do? What how does the set work? Set says that okay, this is illegal. Yeah, set just terminates the program. That's okay. That's acceptable for now. Okay, that's acceptable for now. So, my birthday, Bah, bah birthday is, is valid, I know, okay? It is either 321 or I, I'm terminated my program. But how about this today? What would happen if I do this? Today that, what was the name output? Okay. What do you think I would see on the screen today? Line 27, what do you think that I would see on the screen? Uh, garbage, values. garbage values, yeah, because I did not initialize them. So what happened to my promise of I always keep my objects in a valid state? This doesn't work here, okay? I mean, Maybe if I did this, maybe if I, before today, maybe if I, that set one and one, okay? But in this case, I know that, uh, I know that uh, this is January 1st, but I don't have to, right? I mean, after 26, I don't have to write 28 as a, as a customer of this class. So th there should be a solution for this because when I make my object, new object, I made a new object, another object, those objects, when I make them, they are in invalid state and I don't like it. You might say that we have the same problem in C. When I, when I declare an integer, right, integer i, I don't know the contents of that i. Okay, we had the same problem in C, but it was acceptable in C. Okay, we sometimes wanted it because I don't want to initialize my objects to something, to something all the time, but in C++, in object-oriented programming languages, we don't like it, okay? I like to know always the output of this line. I don't I, the, accept, I cannot accept the garbage values, okay? And even, even if it is initialized to zero and zero, zero and zero are not valid values, right? Zero and zero are not valid values this month and day. So I should come, I should come up with a solution and that solution will come in the next chapter. If, if I don't have any questions, I will go to next chapter. So this chapter, let's remember what we did. We looked at the, we looked at the, okay, structures, structs, and the classes. We defined the classes, member functions, public, private, access and mutator, and the comparisons. And the next chapter, we will talk about more object-oriented, where is my, Next chapter. Well, this is not my next chapter.
to get to the next chapter, I need to see what is behind this stupid... Yeah, here it is. Okay, so constructors and other tools. Okay, so I will give you more details about C++ ways of achieving these object-oriented goals, okay? Constructors and other C++ tools. Okay, let's check the first one. Constructors are, okay, this is the definition. Special C++ class functions, member functions. They are special. First of all, they are functions. And uh, second of all, uh, they are special. Why are they special? Because they are explicitly used for initializing your objects, okay? They are explicitly used for initializing your objects and you don't call your constructors yourself. Uh, your, your, your language, your compiler produces code to call the constructors whenever you make a new object, okay? When you make a new object, the constructor is called automatically. You write your constructor and they are called automatically. So why is it useful? It is useful to initialize your, initialize your objects. Remember, I didn't know the content of my day of year class objects. Now, because of the constructors, I know them. Okay, they are special kind of member functions. They are automatically called when objects are declared. They are, they are, they are, they are made. Okay, they are very useful. And uh, uh, in all the object-oriented programming languages you have constructors, and they are called constructors. Okay, let's see, let's see how we define a constructor, and let's see how we use them by just looking at this code, actually. Okay, day of year class, again, private, month, day, see this one? In my private section, I have a function named test date. It looks like I am going to call this test date function and test date, let's see how it is implemented. It is probably, it is probably, it is, where is, where is, where is my test date? Yeah, test date is this. When it is called, it will test the month and day. If they are legal, it will just return. If they are not legal, then it will terminate the program. That's it. Okay? That's how the test date works. So it is private. My customers are not supposed to call test date. It's not, a it's not a useful function for my customers because my customer's responsibility is not to test the validity of the date, right? It is my responsibility as a software developer. So I made it private. It is only available for the internals of the data. Okay? So these are the constructors. I have one, two, three constructors. As you see, these constructors have the same name as the class, okay? When I do this, day of year, can I, can I find? Well, how come, okay, I, mean, I, I, was, I was trying to, I was trying to mark all of them at the same time, but it didn't work. So, class name is day of year, the constructor, another constructor, another, because I have three constructors. So one of these constructors will be called automatically when I make a new object, okay? Let's see how I make use of them. Day of year, I make three objects, date one, day two, and day three, okay? This one is weird. We have never seen anything before like that. I mean, we didn't write any classes or any classes like that or any class like that, okay? No, 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 it is wrong. I, we, have been, we have been writing this all the time. Day of, day of year, today, right? So we kept writing it that way. So this third one is, third one is, is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is this exact way that we did before. But previously, I didn't write anything like this or like that, okay? So this one says that make a new day of year object, its name is going to be date one, and initialize it with two values, month two, day 21. This one says that make another object, okay? This time 
month value will be 5 and the day value will be 1 I guess and this day 3 will say that make a new object the initial values will be 1 and 1 okay how do I know that how do I know that probably it is in the comments here okay this day of year constructor which doesn't take any parameters it says that I initialize the date to January 1st and this one says that I initialize the value to month the first of the month this month whatever it is and this one initializes it to month value and day value okay so the 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 the, the problem of having not uninitialized having 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 not initialized uh, objects will be solved now because day of year will always be called either this one or that one or that one okay so this one will call this one will call the two parameter constructor one parameter constructor zero parameter constructor or no parameter constructor okay so I think I'm out, I am out of time now I have to stop next week we will start from this position I think your second homework is released now did you see the second homework I think I uh, I programmed it for today well maybe at the end of today uh, you will see your second homework your second homework is not again is not about uh, classes you will continue writing your uh, uh, your uh, solitaire peg program uh, without writing classes third homework will be about writing classes okay and so uh, you are not going to use any of these uh, class techniques in your homework but it is on so next week before coming to class please read the whole se whole chapter chapter seven okay read it run try to run all the programs and try to understand what the main ideas are and uh, come to class with your questions Okay, that's it for today. Did everybody sign the attendance sheet? Uh, yesterday I uh, registered myself, but uh, it was a problem. I, think, uh, I didn't see my name in the chat. Well, I mean, before coming to class, I print them out and I bring them here. I, mean, I don't know what happened. Just check if you made a change in that uh, 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 file. There is a history, change history.